Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Today we're back with how do you explain the 24 hour sun at the South Pole on the flat earth model? Well, they don't have a flat earth model, so they can't explain it. They made some silly ad hoc word salad explanation in part one of this episode. But today we're going to talk about the fact that you can't go to Antarctica because of this thing called the Antarctic Treaty. So let's let him ramble on a little bit more. Cue up the music and let's have some fun. But let's move on. Because the government NASA Jew penguins will kill you. Okay, what you're referring to is Antarctica and the treaty that makes it pretty much impossible to, for you or me or anybody as a private citizen, to freely explore the continent. Except, of course, that's not true. Now, granted, Dave was being a little facetious with that. I think the uh, armed government Jew penguins that keep you from going to Antarctica was probably going a little far and a little tongue-in-cheek. It does serve the point. You maintain that there are armed guards ringing Antarctica, preventing private citizens from going about and wandering. That's not true. Let's have a quick look at the Antarctic Treaty. Now this is the actual Antarctic Treaty and there'll be a link to this in the description of this video. But here they are. Article 1, Antarctica for peaceful purposes. Article 2, freedom of scientific investigation. Article 3, tell the other parties what you're up to. Article 4, nobody can claim territory. Article 5, don't explode nuclear weapons in Antarctica. Number six, what is Antarctica? It's everything south of 60 degrees south latitude. Article seven, you get to inspect everybody's stations if you want to make sure they're not up to any chicanery. Article eight, if you're down there, you're responsible to your own government. Article nine, they're going to have a meeting periodically to have a look at the Antarctic Treaty and resolve any problems. Article 10, don't do anything that's not in the treaty. Article 11, settlement of disputes. Article 12, the treaty is going to be reviewed after 30 years. Article 13, here's how that we make the treaty law. Article 14, we're going to provide copies to everybody that signed. Folks, that's the Antarctic Treaty. All of it. Now, there's nothing in there about not being allowed to go to Antarctica to explore the continent. There's nothing in there that says there are armed Jew penguins keeping you away from Antarctica, or the UN has ships ringing the continent to prevent you from coming in. The only barrier to exploration is Antarctica is essentially one big nature preserve. If you're going to Antarctica, there's a couple of things that you have to do. First, if you bring it in, take it out. You have a responsibility to protect the environment of Antarctica. Your expedition is to have as little environmental impact as possible. Number two, you have to provide for your own rescue. That means buying insurance. That means having something on standby to come and get you when you run into problems. It's not the responsibility of the people at the Scott Station to come get you. They don't even have to let you go see a doctor there. And number three, it's expensive to go to Antarctica. It's at the bottom of the world. It's far away from anywhere. The nearest land in South America is some 600 miles from the Antarctic Peninsula. It's difficult to get there. Yet, people sail boats down there all the time. There's a race that goes around Antarctica. It's a yacht race. You can get a job there. You can buy a cruise to go see there. You can have a trip to the South Pole itself as a tourist. Unless there's something in that treaty written in a type of ink that only flurf eyes can see, your entire argument is invalidated. Merely stating that as a fact, it's a fact. Like, Yes, you can go to Antarctica, but you can go to Pyongyang, North Korea. Can you freely explore the camps, for example? 
Seriously, dude, you're comparing North Korea to Antarctica? Who is the dictator of Antarctica? What is the government in Antarctica that would keep you out? Are you that desperate that you have to use this nonsense? Come on, man. The Antarctic Treaty's right there. Look at it yourself. Well, we haven't been there. I haven't thought about it personally. That issue I haven't thought about. It makes it a little bit more curious when you haven't visited what's really going on there. So just out of curiosity, does that mean that everything in North Korea is an absolute mystery? Do we not have satellites, reconnaissance, intelligence? You can go to Google Earth and pull up airfields in North Korea and count MiGs. So don't give me this nonsense that somehow, because you haven't been there, uh, it doesn't exist. We know it exists because we've had people that have been there. We have people that have escaped from these camps and found their way south. To somehow use re-education camps in North Korea as a justification for your silly narrative is rather disrespectful. Don't do it. Civilians can even apply for jobs there, so you totally could go see it for I'm yourself. I'm confused. Are you talking about the 24-hour sun? Um, yeah, the days are longer and, and all that, but I've already covered the reflection thing. You know what you also did last episode? You showed a continuous time-lapse video of the 24-hour sun from the South Pole. Not reflection an actual 24-hour sun at the South Pole. You've already invalidated your own point in your own video. Come on, guy, you can't see this? I don't think that the sun set and sunrise profile matches between the corresponding latitudes, like how nothing really matches between the corresponding latitudes north and south. How many people live in the Arctic Circle millions. I think it's like four million. How many people live south of the Antarctic Circle? Four million? No. One million? No. You know the difference between the North Pole and the South Pole? There are communities in the North Pole. There are wild animals in the North Pole for food sources. What do you have in the South Pole? There are no governments down there. There are no communities down there. There are no indigenous people down there. We have indigenous people north of the Arctic Circle. So your comparison, once again, is invalid. But let's talk about trees. How many trees are north of the Antarctic Circle? Millions. How many trees are, grow south of the Antarct Antarctic Circle? You know, I'm curious. When you're talking about trees north and south of the Antarctic Circle, did you even look to see if there was any trees south of the Antarctic Circle? Are there any native trees down there? Why don't you go find that out? That's your homework assignment. And as far as trees north of the Antarctic Circle, that's the rest of the world. There are billions, trillions of trees. You know, when I was north of the Arctic Circle, I do recall seeing a few fir trees. But it's not an area known for its trees. As a matter of fact, most of the heating sources there are wicks in animal fat, uh, at least prior to the introduction of fuel oil and electricity. Again, you know, I don't just accept, well, they told me it's there, so it's there. And Kim Jong-un told me that the internment camps for re-education are there and the people are there very happy. I mean, they want to be there and... <laughs> You know, I mean, you really don't have a clue, do you? Um, the thing that amazes me about Flat Earth is how they'll sit down and mock people like the uh, astronauts from Apollo 1. Do you even know their names? That died in our quest to go to the moon. This lack of respect for decency in pursuit of a narrative, I find bothersome, don't you? When, when do you have some skepticism? Isn't that what science is? Indeed, yes, science is skepticism, but flat earth is not skepticism. Skepticism is designed to prove and disprove things. It's constantly trying to disprove things. It also is trying to prove things. What exactly would disprove the flat earth in the eyes of somebody like this? 
I've asked that question many, many times. I have yet to receive a single answer as to anything that would disprove the flat earth to the people that believe in the flat earth. They will not accept evidence to the contrary of their belief. That isn't skepticism. That's denial of reality. I'm skeptical about the Amundsen Scott South Pole Station when I look at the Google Earth. Uh, do you, you guys, you guys are listening who are like, maybe you're like, this guy doesn't seem so stupid. He doesn't seem like he has a less than third grade education. Uh, maybe something, maybe he's not completely insane. I, I am completely insane, but you know, I want to be. I think that statement pretty much says it all, don't you? He is completely insane because he wants to be. Just like people believe in the flat earth because they want to believe in it, and there is nothing that you can show them that will shake that belief. It's a conflict between science, data, and faith. Once again, that's not skepticism. Once again, that's not science. It is belief in a narrative, and quite frankly, denial of reality. The alternative is just boring. You know, this is actually turning out to be a pretty interesting episode on Antarctica. Uh, there are just so many things that are so common in the flat earth, so many misconceptions about the Antarctic Treaty, that it's just interesting to try and address them all at once, and it's taken a couple of episodes to do that. But that's okay, we've got time. Now, tomorrow we're going to have a look at the flat earth approach to science and actually some of the mechanics of the sunrise and the sunset. And then that'll be pretty much it for Antarctica and we'll move on to the next subject. So in the meantime, hit that little like and subscribe button down there. Hit the bell icon if you want to get notifications for future videos. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from northern Michigan. Take care and thank you very much for stopping by.